Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, so um, lately I have been listening to music from Eric Thomas. That's E.T., the hip hop preacher. Um, he's a motivational speaker, but he also puts his music, I mean, his, his motivational speeches to music, which is super cool. So if you like listening to stuff like that, listen to it while you're at the gym. It's so good. But he has this one song. And he was talking about the Millennium Towers, uh, Millennial Towers, Millennium Towers, something like that. Good morning, Aaron. Good to see you, girl. Um, in San Diego. And do you guys know the story? So they built these, like this billion dollar tower with all these um, uh, complexes inside that were worth millions of dollars. And then they found out that they had built it on a crappy foundation. They didn't go deep enough into the, the bedrock and they built it on freaking sand. And so it's sinking, right? And so I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about the foundation of our bodies, the foundation of our metabolisms. Like how do everything I'm trying to teach you guys is like, how do we make this easier? Because being fit today in this era is not easy. Obviously we've got like, I'm passing to McDonald's right now. We've got tons of processed stuff. There's tons of goodies. We live in abundance. The economy is super good, which I'm really grateful for, but like food is easy to come by and in abundance and in tons of processed stuff that it just tastes so good. It's hard to, to not eat it sometimes. Right. And so I'm always looking for solutions for you guys. I'm like, how do we make this easier? How do we make this more manageable? And, and I really want to talk about building a foundation for your metabolism so you can make this easier on yourself. So you guys know, like, I'm not, I'm not a keto zealot, but why do I like keto? And why do I pull people through a phase of it? Why do I like intermittent fasting? Why? I used to hate fasting. It's not like I'm like, I love going without food. Right? <laughs> I kind of do now because I know the benefits of it, but I used to fast for religious purposes and hate it. So why do I promote that now? Because it helps you build a foundation that makes it easier for you to not be overweight. When you train your body how to operate really well without incoming food, you don't feel dependent on it all the time. I used to say when I was like heavier, I used to say, yeah, I'm like the healthiest person in the world until I'm freaking hungry. And then it all goes to shit and it all goes out the window, right? Does that sound familiar? Is that you? Are you like, you have all these plans and all these thoughts, but then when it actually comes down to it, you just keep making bad food choices. You're like staring down the cookies and brownies and you just like can't freaking resist. Part of that is because you haven't trained your metabolism. You haven't trained your body how to be okay on a, on an emotional level without food. So if you're getting hangry or you're having those moments where you're like, freak, I just need something like right now, like, ugh, like you're about to like yell at somebody or you're like shaking or you're just like freaking can't do it. You don't have to feel like that. When you go to eat, you can be super freaking hungry biologically and be good emotionally. And when you can get to that place, then you can make better food choices. So I get good and hungry a lot of days. A lot of days I'm not eating until like one, two o'clock, being real. And I'm up, I'm up at five. Okay. So that's a lot of hours without food and I'm training. I don't tell my coach that I'm supposed to be eating <laughs> faster than that, but I get busy sometimes and I don't. And here's the thing I go to eat and what happens? I'm like, yeah, I'm really biologically hungry, but emotionally I'm composed. So what does that do for me? It helps me make a good choice. You know, I'm like, here come my vegetables. Here, I'm going to chop up my sweet potatoes, right? So that's, that's the gift that has come to me from doing keto, from doing intermittent fasting, because my body, it doesn't freak out when my blood sugar starts to drop. It knows exactly what to do. It knows that it can just tap into fat burning mode. I haven't had that feeling of like being like, yeah, I need to eat something right now. I haven't had that in years now. That is cool. That is building a foundation for your metabolism. So you don't have to do keto per se to get there, but if you can just do it for like a month or so, you it will train you so well to go into fat burning mode. You keep that with you when you start bringing carbs back in. So I really recommend it. That's why I've got keto in and out. That's why I run a lot of my clients through a phase of keto. I'm trying to train their metabolism, help them build that foundation that they can take with them when they start bringing carbs back in. So if you haven't done something like that for yourself, please do it. Especially if you're one of those hangry types, please do it for your family and your children. <laughs> okay. It makes it easier. And then on top of it, man, you add training to that. Everything gets easier. Why is it, why is it pretty easy for me to stay fit? And it's really hard for someone to get there because they just haven't trained that into their habits, their physique. They're, they're actually in their biology. Okay. 
So your body, I look at my, my body is like a, it's like a pet. It's like my, I'm training it, I'm training it. It's like, Hey, I'm like the soul. I'm in charge of this body, even though it knows more than I do. I don't know exactly how it operates. None of us do, but my job is to train it. Hey body, we're going to do this. And once you get to that point, everything gets easier. So please build a foundation. If you haven't done something like a phase of keto or at least intermittent fasting or some 24 hour fast every once in a while, do that for yourself. So this whole game gets easier. It doesn't mean keto is the only way. It doesn't mean intermittent fasting is the only way. It just means you train your body how to do that. So then when you're not, your body can, it can operate with less. It's just like, if you're an athlete, if you're an endurance athlete per se, you know that if you can train yourself to perform really well without using goos and gels and all these little performance boosters, then those things become jet fuel. But if you're dependent on them, your performance sucks without them. You don't want that. You want to be able to train your body how to do really well without. right? Because then everything else just becomes a bonus, but your body, I promise you can do so much more with so much less incoming fuel and resources than you think. So doing things like fasting and keto really help train your body to do that. Okay. So if you haven't done that yet, please do it. You don't have to do keto forever, right? That's my mantra. Do keto. I want you to do keto, do it for at least a month, train your body how to do that. Give yourself the gift of a metabolism that knows what to do when blood sugar starts to drop. And then don't do it forever. You don't have to stay there forever, right? We have all this abundance of nutrients and all these other foods that are carbohydrate, have carbohydrates in them, right? But once you've laid that foundation, now you're more insulin sensitive, right? Now you um, can go longer without eating. You're not reaching for Cheetos and freaking trail mix at work and crap because your body doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know how to go in fat burning mode, right? So it's a gift, but you can then, you know, start to train. I train in a way that I need carbs. I just trained my freaking ace off at the gym. <laughs> I just went freaking bananas. If any of you saw me at the gym today, I was like, I mean, it was like every walking lunge. I'm like, like shaking, standing back up. You know what I'm saying? That's the level I'm, I'm pushing myself in my training. So I need carbs to refuel and to fuel those kind of workouts. Um, but yeah, I definitely went through my keto phase and probably after this competition, some of you guys know I'm doing a bikini competition. It's in Mar it's on March 20th. So it's coming up. Um, I will probably, I'm thinking about I'll probably go through a phase of keto, just a short one after I'm done with this, just cause like for brain power, like I miss, I miss, I miss that fate. I miss how keto feels on my brain. I love how keto feels in my brain. I was actually drinking ketone esters yesterday and a little bit of MCT oil just cause like my fats are low in preparation for this bikini competition. But man, I miss how that feels on my brain. This is, sorry, it cut out for a second. Is keto or intermittent fasting first? That's a good question. Um, it's up to you. You could do either way, but if you do keto, you'll probably naturally fall into intermittent fasting. Cause once your body learns how to operate without incoming carbohydrates, you just don't get as hungry as much. You don't have that need. You don't have a blood sugar need to eat, right? You have an actual physical hunger need to eat. So you'd be amazed how much longer you can go without eating. Cause your body is just like, your brain's like, Oh, we're just, we're running off fat and I got all these fat stores in my body. I'll just run off those. So it can go a lot longer without eating. So I would say, um, if keto doesn't really speak to you, do intermittent fasting for sure. Right. But if keto speaks to you, I like keto because of all the, all the like biohacky benefits, what it does for your brain. It, it enhances mitochondrial biogenesis. So you literally make more mitochondria powerhouse of your cells. That's cool. Um, uh, you don't get those. If you get energy lulls in the afternoon, please do a phase of keto, please. You don't have to live like that. If you're like coming home from work and you're like zonking out on the couch and stuff or like afternoon at work, you're just like brain dead. Like, please do a phase of keto. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be like that anymore for you. You'll be amazed. You're like, dude, I just go, go, go all day. And I never get tired. That's cool. Just make sure you stay on top of salt. <laughs> um, how many hours do you fast and what are the times? So I do all kinds of different fasting. I intermittent fast regular. Tisha, what's up, girl? That's my girl. I miss you too. I was just thinking about you the other day. The other day. Um, so I intermittent fast. There we go. Sorry, guys. 
having some problems there. <laughs> had to come inside my house. Oh my gosh, I dripped my pre-workout on my shirt. It's so embarrassing. That's why I was going like this at the beginning of the <laughs> video. So I'm very heart connected. <laughs> um, sorry, if anybody's still around. So intermittent fasting. Um, I intermittent fast regularly. I'm not like, I'm not trying to. Does that make sense? I'm not like, it's not 12 o'clock yet. I can't eat. I'm just flowing with my day. Um, so a lot of days that does end up being like anywhere between like 11 and one is pretty typical for me to eat my first meal. Um, just cause I'm so used to it. Once you do intermittent fasting and keto, that just starts to become very normal feeling. Um, and then for actual plan fast, a 24 hour fast is kind of my go-to. I do those all the time. Like, um, so typically, you know, maybe on a weekend or something like that. Um, but I also really like to do 36 hour fasts cause I think those are easy because all you do is like you eat dinner the night before and then the whole next day you don't eat at all. And then you go, I wake up, I always feel amazing. I feel like totally normal. I go work out. And then when I come home, I make food and eat. So I feel like that's pretty manageable. By the way, this is my higher necklace. So my ladies who do their uh, personal development, their 90 days, they get one of those. And a little note for me. It's pretty cool. This symbol for higher for my coaching system, it's a mountain with an eagle flying out of the center of it. And it means that the meaning of it is that we think we have to climb the mountain to like go higher, but actually we need to go inside and then we can soar higher than we ever thought possible. So the Eagle is really important to me. It's a big part of my ayahuasca journey and the mountains have been really healing to me too. So that's the meaning behind all that. Okay. So, um, yeah, fasting. I don't do extended day fasts. I've done a three day fast before and I have also, um, tried to do a three day fast before and a little over 48 hours into that second one. Um, the same thing happened on my 36, I mean, my 72 hour fast. I don't know. My body doesn't all of a sudden I'm not making ketones anymore. I don't know if my adrenaline just going too high. I've done like all the things salt. I don't know, but I just, I do not like the way that I feel when, once I get past, um, like 48 hours on a fast. So I just don't, <laughs> I don't feel like I need to, um, my, my ego is not in it. I don't have like some immune system issue that makes me need to fast that long. So I just don't. So just remember that with all the extended day fasting out there, like you don't have to do that. I mean, you can, if you want to, um, should you have donuts after you work out Ross, you should definitely have donuts after you work out because donuts are bomb. <laughs> just kidding. I love donuts. Donuts are like my pizza and donuts are like my two foods that I'm not living this earth life without having. Um, but you know, <laughs> Are they better for you if they have jelly inside? Yes, actually the glycemic response is higher from the jelly, which helps shut insulin, shuttle fuel into your mouth. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, actually though, really, if we wanna talk about glycemic response after working out, like, yeah, I like to have some carbs, some quick carbs, right? Fast carbs after my workout because I want an insulin response to help shuttle the proteins, the amino acids from my protein um, into my muscles. So I don't eat donuts after my workout because those aren't my favorite carbs source uh, most of the time, but I do eat like sweet potatoes, rice, stuff like that after my workouts. Fruit, sometimes like some banana and my protein shake or something like that. Do you eat donuts after your workout? <laughs> There are, you know, like if you guys follow like bodybuilders, a lot of them, they'll, they'll do stuff like they'll have like Skittles or candy or something after their workout to try to get like an insulin response. I'm not really on that, on that train. I'd rather eat smarter carbohydrates than that, that have like nutrients in them. But I understand why they're doing it. They do want that insulin response. Some people don't think that matters. I think why not? <laughs> it, I, I would rather try to get the muscle, the, the nutrients shuttled into my muscles um, with that. Okay. All right, guys, I gotta go. I get my kids off to school, but just want to share that if you have not yet built a foundation for your metabolism by doing something like fasting or keto or something that trains your body, what to do when it's low on incoming carbohydrates, you got to do that for yourself. If you're chronically dependent on carbohydrates all the time, like as soon as they, you start to run out of whatever you just ate, your energy goes low and you just need something again, you're making it so hard on yourself and you don't need to do something hard for like a month, do keto or, or fasting, intermittent fasting for like at least a month so that for the rest of forever, it can be easier. Let's see. Cheats have been giving me heartburn lately. Yeah. See, I'm not about that life. I, I like, I mean, sometimes, right? Like every once in a while I'll eat like whatever naughty foods, indulgent foods, cookies or donuts or pizza or whatever, but 
not on the regular because I just don't really like the way they make me feel. Um, how intense would you say a workout needs to be in order to benefit from insulin? That's a really good question. Um, so I guess like, let's look at it more like this way. Let's, let, let's, let's talk about glycogen. So if you're going to like, let's say you've, you've eaten some carbs and your muscles are full of glycogen, your liver's full of glycogen, right? So those stored carbohydrates, if you want to dump that out in order for like the next time you eat to be able to take some in, you have to go intense enough for that to happen. I say your workout needs to be as, as intense as freaking possible. If that's the intention, if you're trying to build muscle as intense as freaking possible, like this, when I see this, like people, this is the intensity level. Like, mm, mm, I'm like, go home, go home. Why are you wasting your time? <laughs> like if you're going to be in there lifting, be in there lifting, like when I'm lifting, it's like, whoa, like, oh, like everything I've got from the inside. If you look at people who have muscle, that's what they're doing, right? So that level of intensity, like, oh, like and pushing past your limits, that's going to cause your body to dump out that glycogen into your bloodstream to give you energy. There has to be a stimulus for that to happen. If you're just like, do, 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 like, why would your body need to dump very much out into your bloodstream? It's not right. Running can be the same way. You're running at intense levels. Like your body's like, holy freaking crap. She needs energy. Let's dump some of this glycogen into her bloodstream. When I was wearing a continuous glucose monitor, my blood sugar was going so high when I was running because I run really fast. I run really hard. I was running like sub seven minute miles, you know, so six something pace. I'm like booking it running. My, my blood sugar was going so high. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, if you want to. And then, so then what happens? What does that mean? That means some of that stored carbohydrate that was in my muscles is now I use it for energy. So I come home and I eat carbs and guess what doesn't happen? Those carbs don't go to fat storage. They go back to refill the glycogen that was just used. And that insulin response created by the carbs that I eat post-workout helps shuttle the amino acids from my protein into my muscles to help with repair. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Yay. So that's why like, it's like carbs are bad. I'm like, drives me freaking bananas, honestly. Nothing's bad. Food is not bad. It's what's the intended purpose. What does it do, right? So like good, bad thinking. In all regards to life, we need to get out of good, bad thinking. It's not good or bad. It's what do I want to have happen? And is the thing that I'm doing helping that have happen? Okay, if not, it's gotta go. If, if yes, let's do it, right? There's so much good, bad, black and white thinking out there. It's like white rice is bad. It's like, um, some of the most shredded people I know who are very healthy eat white rice all the time. Actually, the lady who was doing my nails, who's from Vietnam, who's like 80 pounds is like, I live off white rice. So it's like, okay. <laughs> all right. Anyway, me going off on a tangent. How intent? Oh, wait, I already answered that. Any other questions? Okay. Nope. All right. Keto with KJ. Yeah. So as intense as possible, always with your weight training, go as, as intense as possible while still maintaining proper form right? If you're going up in weight, your form is going to deteriorate just a little bit, right? But you don't want to get into like the point where it's dangerous or you might hurt yourself. All right, guys, I really got to go. <laughs> I got to get my boys to school. Have a great day. Bye.